Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. So last time we did a few random things, so this time we're going to be a little bit more organized in what we do. And today we are going to be looking at the effects of insane amounts of gravity. And by insane amounts of gravity, um, well, I mean a lot. And we're going to look at the effects on both ripping things apart and basically trying to slingshot things at each other and see how fast we can get things going compared to the speed of light. So to start we are going to put these two black holes down and we're going to go to their position and we're actually going to modify all this so it didn't really matter where I put them to start. We're going to go zero, zero, zero. And this one is going to be at If we can go down into the thing and find the number, ah, here we go, zero, zero, zero. So one of these is going to be, does it have to be, can I switch it to AU? If I do one, AU, there we go. So these are one AU apart. You know what we can do is put Earth. In between them, we can do zero, zero, and then switch that to 0 0.5 AU. And now Earth is exactly between these two giant black holes. What we're going to do is we're going to position lock these black holes. And we're going to leave Earth where it is. We're going to s turn down time quite a bit because this is going to be very, very fast. So we're going to go at less than a millisecond per second, and here we are. So Earth is immediately going to start being affected. Um, we may have to go a little bit faster. How about a hundred milliseconds per second? Is that enough? Maybe we have to go a little bit faster. So I don't want this to fly by and nothing to be seen, but at the same time, I don't want this video to be eight hours long. Though I'm sure some of you wouldn't mind that. There we go. So we can see that the Earth is being ripped apart in equally on both sides. But the question is, will it get pulled towards one of the black holes more than the other? Or because of its exact center, will it just stay exactly where it is? So let's look. If we go to Earth's motion and look at its... Look at that tidal stress. <laughs> oh, man. We go to its position. We can see Earth is actually staying steady. It is not moving. Which means Universe Sandbox 2 is uh, doing a very good job at being accurate. Oh, here we go. So one of the black holes has actually managed to catch its attention more than the other. This is going to cause Earth to begin moving towards one side. And for us to actually see this difference, we're going to have to expand Earth because Earth has already been completely ripped apart. But that's fine. Quick switching to a one. And let's see which way it goes. And it went to the left. So, it was accurate for quite a while though, so no complaints there. Let's try a bigger planet. Let's try ripping Jupiter apart with these huge, huge amounts of gravity. So, we're going to go back to motion, go down to our distance, and we're going to go zero, shoot, zero, zero, then switch this to 0.5. AU, Jupiter is now in the direct center of these black holes. We're going to switch this to one second per second, real time, and let's see the effects. Jupiter actually seems to do be doing pretty well at the moment. We can probably speed it up a little bit without much trouble. Huh, Jupiter is not taking any damage yet. 
Here we go, now we can see the gas being ripped off of Jupiter and heating up from the extreme forces. Jupiter itself is heating up. Uh, let's do the temperature. Uh, 3000 degrees. We can see this giant stream of matter going towards both black holes. And Jupiter is quickly shrinking. As time goes by, Jupiter is just going to disappear. And once again, the black holes have claimed another life. So, we're going to up the ante after one more of these experiments. We're going to put down a star, the sun, in between the two black holes. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it exactly in the center, and we will see if this causes it to supernova, if it just rips all the gas off, or what. Once again, who knows? Well, other than the computer. The computer probably knows, although it doesn't know ahead of time, only once it's already simulating it. Beautiful thing about computers, they don't think ahead. And now we do 0.5 AU. Boom, right in between the black holes. Switch it to seconds per second. One second per second. And let's see the effects on the sun. So as we speed up time a little bit. The sun is getting darker, probably because of the insane amount of gas being ripped off of it. Each one of these fragments is larger than Jupiter and we can see hundreds of them being ripped off, very quickly taking the mass out of the sun. The sun will not be a star for much longer. The sun is now about, well, now we need to go to comparing to the sun. It now has about a third of the mass it used to have, and it's going to start finding nuclear fusion very hard to keep. Oh, well, it got eaten by the black hole, so that's the end of that. So let's bring the gravity to an even more extreme. Let's make a square. I've attempted to do this before, but you know, it's slightly tricky. So we want to do this. So we just need to think of how we're positioning this. This needs to be 1 AU in that direction and 0 in the other. So we should be able to see in our right here. This is the one that's supposed to be 0. And this is the one that's supposed to be 1 AU. That's perfectly there. This has to... Oh shoot, that's actually almost perfect. And I'm just retyping that so that's exactly 1 AU. And there we go. Those are in perfect positions. And what we're going to do is position lock them to make sure they don't move around. Not rotation lock. Position lock. Where is that? There we go. And that looks good. So now we're going to put Earth in between all four means it's going to be half an AU in each direction or astronomical unit and if we go down we will see the two numbers we have to change 0 0.5 AU and 0 0.5 AU here we go earth versus four black holes all ripping at it from opposite sides in three two one real time we're going to speed it up a bit so that we can actually see what's going on and any second now we're going to start to see look at that the earth is just being ripped apart in every direction the rocks aren't even going in the four directions, they're just being ripped in every direction. That is absolutely insane. Because they are equally pulling in almost every direction, it's not even favoring one. We could make this even more intense by putting it in a 
cube arrangement where there is a black hole below and above, which we will do next. So let's watch as the Earth spits out the last amount of material it has. This is happening so quickly it's not even heating up the Earth. And it's causing quite a bit of lag because of all the particles. And there goes all of that. The black holes have feasted. And now the final uh, test we have to do. This is going to be complicated. So if we have the black holes in the center here, these are all half of an AU away from Earth when they're tested. So what we have to do is we have to go black holes, 10 million suns, or yeah, 10 million suns, plop it down, put it where Earth was before. So if we go to position, we just have to go 0 0.5 AU. I should actually just copy that. Paste. <clears throat> and this also has to be up by that much. Then we have to copy, we'll make another one, and have it go down by that much. But the good news is we're almost done. Well, unless you wanted the video to extend a lot, extend a lot longer. And what we can do is negative 0.5 AU. And look at that. We can only really see it here. But that is in every single direction. Earth will be being ripped apart by equally massed black holes. Well, they were equally massed. Uh, they may have a tiny bit more mass on. Oh, yeah, that slightly affects it, doesn't it? There we go. Okay, equally massed black holes, and now we just have to put Earth in. What an experiment. Oh shoot, that was almost bad. I need to position lock these, or it would get really out of hand. Okay, there we go. Now Earth is going to have to be put... right in the center of this and let's see what happens will it just be a sphere of rocks being pulled out of the earth because that's what it seems like it'll be from the last experiment and earth looks fine for now let's speed it up a little bit just until we can actually see an effect And it looks like the top and bottom are being ripped out faster. But why? Let's check and see if there's a reason for this. Because Earth is actually perfectly placed between everything. It is... Where's position? Halfway in each direction, and the top and bottom are half an AU in each direction. Meaning they are... Equally spaced. As you can see right here, there's the same distance between these than these. Which means that something is up in the game. It is not properly handling this. Huh. Well, that's very interesting because that shows a slight physics problem. It seems that the up and down axis are taking priority over the other ones, unless I made a mistake. But I very carefully did each one of these black holes, and it's strange that it's only up and down that were affected like that. Did we just find a bug? Maybe we did. Um, let's test with something a bit larger that can be ripped apart more easily. Let's put the... Actually, let's put a bigger star in. Okay, not that big. Not that big either. This should be very, very easy for the black holes to rip apart because it'll be so close to them. Let's see how they act. 
So if we go down to position, <coughs> whoops, uh, we can do that. It is in the perfect position now. Oh, there's a little bit of rendering weirdness here. That is fine. That isn't a physics problem, thus I do not mind it at the moment. And let's see what happens. Will it just be ripped apart from the top and bottom? So we can see the star spinning and yeah, I only, I see material coming out of the bo uh, bop top. I see material coming out of the bottom. The star has, well, been ripped apart so much it's now just a planet and it's just being ripped up and down. Interesting. Well, guys, I think we did something very interesting today, and the result was actually surprising. There is something physics-wise off in Universe Sandbox 2, and maybe we'll see an answer to that at some point. One possible answer, although I doubt it, is that um, planets are not actual spheres because of the way they spin. They are oblate spheroids, which make it so that the top and bottom bulge well actually no that's the opposite the sides would bulge out making the top and bottom slightly further away from the uh black holes this means that no matter how i put it i'm not sure what's causing this and maybe we can get some confirmation another time but for now we're going to save this simulation and call it the ripper Maybe sometime whatever went wrong will be fixed, and uh, we can use this again. So we're going to exit the game. And I will see you all next time. Oh yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe, it re really helps too. And yeah, if, if you like and subscribe, I will not put you in the middle of the horrible black hole person ripper. <laughs> oh man, that sounds pretty brutal.